asked them, you know, am I going to prison? They said yes. I got one of the handcuffs off. I reached up front and uh, got the pistol away from the officer that was driving. The other one jumped in the back seat trying to get it away. I shot them both. Uh, got in a truck that was parked behind me, made the guy get out. I opened up the back of the cop car, grabbed my rifle that they had took, uh, and I took off up north. But seemingly possessed by the devil, Hank wouldn't stop there. He went on to kill a rookie FHP officer and steal another vehicle before heading north to the Shell gas station where he took the clerk hostage and barricaded himself in. A long afternoon standoff took place where Hank called a radio station to tell his side of the story and they urged him to release his hostage, which he did before SWAT set off concussion grenades and made entry only to find that Hank had taken his own life. This crazy story all goes back to 10.30 in the morning on May 19, 1998, when Bernice Bowen made a 911 call that her son had been shot in the head. Responding officers noted that a male was trying to leave the premises. They quickly apprehended him. The man identified himself as Jeffrey Benton, or also the boy's father. He told the officers that this was an accident, that the child had been walking around with one of his rifles when it accidentally discharged and shot him in the head. Not knowing what to believe, the police brought him downtown and questioned him some more before two Tampa Bay detectives, Rick Childress and Randy Bell, brought him back to the scene to go over things a little bit further. Three rifles were found in the house, including one that they believed was the murder weapon. You can see Rick Childress carrying it out of the house into his detective's car. You'll notice at this point that Hank Earl Carr, or Jeffrey Benton, is actually handcuffed in front because the police officers believe that they're dealing with a grieving father. Little did anybody know that day that who they were actually dealing with was a known violent felon by the name of Hank Earl Carr. Hank had had so many run-ins with police that he actually kept a handcuff key on his persons at all times. One that he would actually use to escape this situation. This video that you see of Rick Childress and Randy Bell at the back of their car placing the rifle into the trunk is probably the last time anyone saw these two alive. As they drove off, Hank used his handcuff key to free one of his hands from his handcuffs, reached up front, grabbed one of the detective's uh, pistols, shot him in the head, and then shot the other detective as he was attempting to escape through the back seat. He now jumps out of the police car, gets his rifle out of the trunk, and armed and on the run, steals another car, and begins to head north from Tampa. Around the Dade City area, he encounters a rookie FHP officer by the name of James Crooks. He engages this officer in a gunfight ensues in which James Crook, the rookie FHP officer, loses his life. But Hank Roll Carr is also injured at this time. One of the most notable things that happened this day and the most memorable thing I think in my mind from this day was when a Tampa corporal looks over to others to let them know that there's now three dead, that he has shot three dead. While they're still searching for Hank, all of this is going on, he makes his way up to Brooksville area where he pulls off the interstate and into a Shell gas station. He takes the cashier hostage and a standoff occurs. Now this standoff lasted most of the afternoon. And um, one thing that has kind of always been debated that they're not sure if the radio station actually called Hank or if Hank actually used the phone at the gas station to call the radio station. However, he did call a radio station and give an interview, and these are, in his own words, what was going on that day.
Shortly after those words were spoken, the on-air personality of the radio show was able to talk Hank into releasing his hostage, which he did. And after she made it across the street, the SWAT and other officers quickly got her to safety before making their plans for their next move. The plans came up that they should put two concussion grenades at the back center of the building and set those off, which would distract the gunmen, allowing the SWAT team to enter and possibly have a shootout, basically, with Hank Earl Carr. When those concussion grenades went off, the shockwaves could be felt for miles around. The SWAT team prepared to make their entry, and as they did, they found Hank Earl Carr dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. And that brought this day to an end. Rather than face the consequences of taking four innocent lives, he decided to take his own life. One last chapter in this story is that his girlfriend at the time, Bernice Bowen, was actually sentenced for child endangerment for allowing a known convicted felon to be around her child. She was also convicted of lying to the police because she did not tell them who Hank really was. She served 18 years of a 22-year sentence and as of 2016 has now been released. And that's the story of Hank Roll Carr and the craziness that happened May 19, 1998 that is still the deadliest day in Florida law enforcement history. While I don't condone what he did, I always have been curious as to why he did it. And so tonight, I'm going to take you guys with me to the scene of the crime, use the Necrophonic app and see if I can't contact Hank and get some answers. All right, my friends, right here behind me in what is now a drainage ditch is where the Sunoco gas station used to be. That is where that fateful day came to its horrible end. Um, less than probably a hundred, maybe 150 feet from where I'm at right now was the back corner of the Sunoco gas station. And that is where he died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Um, now I want to ask him first why he killed his six year old stepson. I also want to ask why he did the rest of the stuff he did. We're going to see if we can contact Hank tonight, find out any answers we can to why he did what he did, seeing that no answers ever came out of it. Alright, we're going to run the Necrophonic in the car here because um, there's just too many trucks out there and I can't hear anything. So we're going to try this again, but we're going to do it inside the car. I can't believe how loud and obnoxious all these vehicles are. Hank, are you still here? Yes. I can, I can definitely hear you better in here now. Do you remember what you did to your son? shot him was that an accident yeah sure Do you regret what you did that day? That's how it went. Do you think you were possessed that day? By a demon? Do 
Hank, are you in hell for what you did? Yes. Do you, do you regret that your girlfriend had to spend all that time in jail because of you? She did 22 years for you. Did she ask you to kill her son? Do you remember how many police officers you killed? I just want you to know Hank, because I'm talking to you doesn't mean I can tell what you did. Who cares? I just really always wondered what happened that day. Do you have anything that you want to say about it? Well, I, I hope your son, well, your stepson, I hope your stepson went to heaven. He didn't deserve what you did to him. So that was a very interesting necrophonic session. Obviously, it didn't go exactly how you would love it to go, where you just get yes, no, and exact answers to everything that you ask. But a lot of those answers were very interesting to me. So I can't wait to see what you guys think. I know I missed some of them, so um, hopefully some of you can translate some of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video. I have a few others that I'd like to do, and if they work out well, then I'll continue to do them. Um, let me know down in the comments if you like this and don't forget on the end screen coming up you can click up here to watch another video click down here to watch a playlist where you can watch all the videos and if you're new to the channel or just haven't yet don't forget to click up here to subscribe and make sure you click that bell to get notifications because YouTube is very stingy with notifications seems like some of you might be kind of stingy too with the thumbs up button so show the journey some love smash that thumbs up and we'll see you next time, my friends. Much love.